Uh, so I was gonna have an intro here, like a skit, you know? But YouTube's copyright system just shafted me so hard. It wasn't even claims like last time, it was just straight up blocks. So if you're wondering, that's why this video is up a day late. I'm sorry, but I ain't got time for all that. How about this? Just pretend there was this really awesome and funny intro skit, and I'll just get onto the video. What's up, everybody? We are here once again. You already know what time it is. It is time for me to finish what I started. Disclaimer, as always, this is gonna be controversial. You may disagree, you may have your own opinion. That is perfectly fine. In fact, I love it. Don't forget to put your own interpretations and theories in the comments below, I read them all. And case in point, I think before we continue, I should firstly recount my previous video. And secondly, respond to some of you guys' comments because I think there was an error in communication. Can I just say, first of all, thank you so much for all the support on all my videos and let it be known on the record that I think basically all of these comments are good. I just think either I didn't make my theory clear enough or something happened there. Either way, I'm here to clear the air now because it also just so happens to tie into my super awesome mega FNAF theory. Here we Go. So this guy has a really cool theory, but what I want to draw attention to is the first sentence. Eleanor from Fazbear Frights is referenced in Lally's game, Tales from the Pizzaplex. This is true. And with something I actually cut from the video, as sad as it is, I physically can't always fit everything into one video. And this segment just had to be left on the cutting room floor. But I do think it is important to mention because as I point out in my video, the tales from the Pizzaplex seemingly straight up take place in the universe of the games. My evidence for this being the direct game accurate descriptions of locations, the seeming direct answers to questions like Patient 46, and Ruin giving us the Vanny Mask, answering a question I posed in one of my earlier videos. Are there parts of the Pizzaplex that aren't real? Is the Pizzaplex actually bigger than we think it is? Are there hidden doors and entrances spread around? Are there hidden parts to the Pizzaplex? Yes, there are, and they're the locations from Tails. And so, if Tails is directly connected, and Tails takes place in the same universe as Frights, then wouldn't that make Frights directly connected? Which then of course leads down the same rabbit hole I went down before. About all of it being canon, etc, etc. When he said the books are canon, he meant they were their own canon, as in their own separate universe, and weren't the actual lore. But did he? Let me check the post again. Nope, that's not what he said. In fact, the whole point of the video is talking about how that isn't the case. I saw a lot of comments along this line, like this one. Pretty simple, he says. First time. This is FNAF, buddy. It's funny, because people keep throwing out the whole robot kid theory because it's a constant theme in the books, but we've gotten almost no theories regarding memories, which have a lot of importance in the books. This is an interesting take. I kind of hate it, but I love the new viewpoint. First of all, thank you. Second of all, I agree. I do actually think, and I get more convinced with every release, that my theory on the books is correct. If you're unaware, the latest Tales from the Pizzaplex features a story that pretty definitely matches with FNAF 4, one to one. And not only that, the most common interpretation of FNAF Ruin is that it mirrors the Silver Eyes trilogy in terms of progression. Both of these recent developments in the theory space lend credence to my theory but as I said in the video, it feels hollow. Yeah, there's some cool ideas in there, but it leaves you feeling unsatisfied. As Joey Strife says, of course the books are canon. They always were. The question is whether or not they're a part of the same continuity as the games. But, but, but the video, point of the video. Either way, can we tie it back to the games? Can we use these to get actual answers for the community's most burning questions? Namely, what the hell is going on in Security Breach Ruin? Here's a good one to end on. Let's look at this. FNAF World is canon, and much more important to the current plot of FNAF than we currently realize or understand. Hey, you read my mind. That's exactly where we're starting. FNAF World. You may laugh, you may scoff, but this game is the key. If you didn't watch my last video, I'll explain it here again, because to be honest, I think I hit it dead on. This game takes place in a separate dimension that is linked to our own. We know this for a fact, not just from the game itself, the eyes talking to us, but also from Old Man Consequences inclusion in Ultimate Custom Night. However, although this dimension is linked, it is not parallel. You see, FNAF World takes place 
outside of time. This explains how a lot of these characters can coexist, and a lot of the more nonsensical elements. Everything out there has an effect in here. But what does this tell us? Well, the theory I put forward is that FNAF World is trying to tell us the importance of memory. The hidden storyline of creating Happiest Day and the Old Man Consequences ending providing us this screen, which is also labelled Happiest Day, seem to tie into that pretty well. And as we all know, memory is important because it is the key feature of Remnant, the in-universe explanation for the haunted animatronics. But this is all stuff from last video. Why is this useful to us now? Well, to answer that, let's look at the release window of FNAF World and when it came out in relation to other games in the franchise. Scott Cawthon said in his interview that FNAF World is canon, which means it must have at least some kind of importance to the games close to it, meaning FNAF 4 and sister location. Now, if you're a fan like me, knowing that sets off a few alarm bells in your head because this period of FNAF is probably the biggest evolution, I guess is the word, in the series. Many people believe that between FNAF 4 and sister location, Scott Cawthon's vision for the storyline changed. And personally, I also believe this to be the case. Without getting into details and as weird as it may seem, I believe FNAF World to be a semi-transitionary game between these two stories. You see ideas that would later transpire in the Silver Eyes trilogy come to fruition here, like it being Henry who made Baby. Another point in my books of canon theory by the way, but also a lot of ties to the earlier games, like FNAF 3. I think FNAF World is the bridge between what I like to call old FNAF and new FNAF. And I think it shows that to us through memories. It's not a coincidence that Ruin and FNAF World share so many similarities. In fact, I think it's time I put all the pieces back together. There was a reason I told you all that. Made it a point to emphasize just how important memories are to the story. It was all in service of this. The grand unveiling of my ultimate theory. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to present to you Five Nights at Freddy's The Reincarnation Theory. Okay. Hear me out. Now, to some of you, my loyal audience, this may sound familiar because, as with a lot of things, I mentioned this briefly in a previous video. But at the same time, I personally think it's not likely. If they were gonna go that route, I'm more convinced they would decide more on a reincarnation aspect. But why? For context, this was me on the topic of Gregory being a robot kid. And yet, I mentioned a reincarnation. Looking back at this, it struck me as odd. I mean, where's the evidence? Why did a reincarnation, substantiated by nothing, sound more likely to me from a story standpoint than a robot child? Something which had literally been teased since the last novel released. Well, I did some digging and found that it wasn't really based on nothing. Let me ask you this. What is the meaning behind the Remember Jeremy message in Security Breach Ruin? What does this mean? Well, as I'm sure a few of you are aware, this is not the first time this message appears in a FNAF game. In fact, in Help Wanted, this is a message that can appear on one of the death screens. And it's odd there too, because if you've been paying attention, over the years there have been quite a number of Jeremy's in FNAF. Jeremy is the name of one of the missing children. Jeremy is also the name of one of the night guards. And Jeremy is the name of someone infected by the glitch trap virus. Now, which Jeremy do you think the message could be referring to? My theory? All of them. Let's look at each of their fates. Jeremy the child was murdered by William Afton as part of the missing children's incident. Jeremy the night guard was attacked by an animatronic after it had been tampered with by William Afton. Jeremy the worker died after he was taken over by Glitch Trap, aka William Afton. Three Jeremys, three gruesome fates. And the connections don't end there. You guys are gonna have to humor me for a second while I go full conspiracy theory mode over here because trust me, as soon as I started looking at things from this viewpoint, so many things just fit into place. Let me ask you this, why do so many similar events keep happening? A group of children go missing in Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. A group of children go missing in Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. A group of children go missing in Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. A final location burnt to the ground. A final location burnt to the ground. A final location burnt to the ground. A grand opening that is forced to shut. A grand opening that is forced to shut. A grand opening that is forced to shut. And finally, an animatronic bite involving a frontal lobe and an animatronic bite involving 
a frontal lobe. Listen to this, okay? This is Mangle's audio from FNAF 2. Now, I've heard conflicting accounts of this being stock audio or an actual distorted voice mixed in with the stock audio, but I'm just saying it how I see it. I hear little boy missing his frontal lobe. That's what I hear, and that's just what we see, but not here, not in FNAF 2. Whether or not the audio is real, it sent me down this track on asking the main question, why do the bite of 87 and the bite of 83 share so many arbitrary similarities? Why do all of these events share so many arbitrary similarities? Do you see what I'm leading to? I'm leading it all the way back to memory, baby. The memory is what makes it repeat. It's like the memory has been infused into the location. These events are doomed to repeat themselves. They happen naturally, like echoes. I mean, there's just too many similarities between 83 and 87. I'm just gonna put them all here. Again, it's like poetry, so if they rhyme. Now, a theory I've had for a long time is that FNAF 3 isn't the first fire in the stories. I think Michael burned down one of the past pizzerias, and that's why the fans phantoms are burnt. But think about it, what are the phantoms if not direct evidence supporting my theory? These guys are straight up not real. The parts are there but not the shells. These guys are entirely memories. The memories of the building we are in. The memories attached to these objects around us. The memories infused to the arcade machines. Do you see what I mean? There is actually too many details like this to fit into the video. Stop and start thinking about it. You will notice just how many times events repeat themselves. Hell, according to some theories, the whole of FNAF 4 is a repeated event due to memory. This is not so far-fetched, people. But what does this mean? What does it mean for Ruin? Well, it means that everyone is here. Yes, reincarnation theory, baby. I think everyone is back. I think Gregory is the crying child. Cassie is Cassidy. Vanessa is Elizabeth. And Burn Trap is... Well, does that technically count as a reincarnation? Help me out here, people. But this is where things get interesting. Because now I'm about to add a whole new layer on this theory. Because I also believe everyone is here. Times two. The pizza plex is built on top of Freddy Fazbear's pizza place, which is where FNAF 6 happened and ended with all of the spirits vanquished to the ether. Or did it? I proposed in my last theory that the blob is Molten Freddy, who encompasses the remnant of all of the remaining animatronics. The inclusion of the Charlie door and the Night Marion stuff implies she's still around, in some form at least. And finally, this. The room that just screamed out at me the moment I saw it. The baby plushy room. Damn, this throws a spanner in the mix. I don't see how this is anything but confirmation that Elizabeth is still around, in at least one form or another. But let me back up. Let's talk about Night Marion. I am the fearful reflection of what you have created. Night Marion is the darkness created by William Sins, and it infects everything. I'm sure you've seen the theories by now, and I find it hard not to be convinced. Not only are the plushies and staff bots everywhere, but so are these wires. These thick, protruding tentacles that are even more prominent in Ruin. If you guys have ever watched Stranger Things, it's basically exactly like that. Or class. I doubt anyone's ever watched class. Now if this doesn't prove my theory about the memories infecting the locations and causing the repeated events to play out again and again, I don't know what will. And especially if you believe the theory that FNAF 6 happens at the same location as FNAF 4 Fredbear's. It is literally what I'm saying is happening, happening. Same locations and all. But let me end on this note. An odd detail which I pointed out in my first Ruin video. Something which I knew would be important I just didn't know how. The noises you hear when you put on the Vanny mask. Screaming, laughter, is the sounds of a party. A kid's party. And we know Freddy Fazbear's pizza place is in the basement. We know Fredbear's is in the basement. These sounds are a memory. An echo repeated again and again. Imprinted onto the timeline burned onto the timeline. The same cycle of tragedy doomed to repeat itself forever and ever. Hey, what's this? A comment? What's it say? Oh, come on. 
You just made the multiverse and didn't actually put a certain stone timeline. Huh. I guess you're right. Maybe I'll do that next time. So, how do you enjoy the video? I hope that made sense. This was a bit of a doozy. In short, what I'm basically trying to say is, I think memory as a horror trope is more entrenched in basically everything FNAF since very early on. And I think reincarnation is likely the explanation for why a lot of these events that are more or less fixed points in the timeline keep repeating themselves. Also, it explains a lot of otherwise coincidental or random characters and inclusions. But that's just my opinion, and I know it is controversial. And being for real, I truly do think that this theory is what Scott Cawthon intended for the story, especially the modern story. And I think you can also take it a step further like I did before by tying it more heavily into the books, but as I said, I've already gone that far. The one thing that stumps me is the empty baby mask. The spiritless puppet head can be explained easily. Nightmarion is a different side to Charlie than the puppet we have known before, a different entity almost. It makes sense that the head is empty. What doesn't make sense is why, if baby is still around, and she has to be, is this head empty? Maybe Elizabeth is stuck in the arcade cabinets or something. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. This was a massive one, so if you want to help support the channel, Channel, you can also consider joining to become a member. You can get an array of special perks and benefits including access to the Discord server. With that all being said, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one.